side who doesn't when they decide they have to be lawyers. Uh, and that was, that was definitely my fate. Uh, it, was, it was clear that I was not good out to be an artist. Uh, but I, I, I would say that uh, it was, it took some creativity uh, to get this bill from Congress. Uh, and I want to start by uh, recognizing the contribution of a bunch of really fine lawyers who spend their days uh, of the very end of the last Congress writing memos about what had happened in the Senate as the bill proceeded at the, at the very last uh, moments of the Congress. Ralph and his staff, and, and uh, I actually want to take time to mention three people, Eric Schwartz, Bill Patrick, and Lou Flax, who were just spent a trip. Writers, computer programmers, all the creative people in this country. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Artist and Vice President of National Artists Equity, uh, former President of National Artists Equity, and a witness on behalf of the Artists Equity. And I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> but my wife is. I know how to cover my bases. Uh, today is a, is a great day uh, for visual artists in the United States uh, in being able to uh, have this legislation and be able to uh, pursue our rights uh, and to protect ourselves in the, in the future. This is a, an important piece of legislation. Um, not many people uh, know about it, uh, but they will a year from now, two years from now more, three years even more. And it's going to continue. And we're very pleased with that. I think one of the things that made a big difference in this effort was the support that we received from the National Endowment for the Arts. We all know that they're in the papers these days, uh, but this is a positive thing. Unfortunately, good news doesn't always travel fast, but we want to push it along uh, today because we believe that the support from the chairman, uh, John Fromar, uh, in endorsing this legislation was the first time at the national level that an artist, visual artist rights uh, legislation was endorsed by the endowment. And we're very, very pleased uh, to, uh, to have that endorsement and look forward to other areas as, as we go along with regards to the Visual Artist Rights Act and hopefully we'll gain that support as well. Uh, Mr. Fromeyer uh, couldn't be with us today uh, because of previous engagement, but the senior deputy chair at the endowment, uh, Ann Melda Rudisa, uh, is here. And Ann? To uh, talk with him earlier today. And uh, he's very uh, unhappy that he's not in town for good news, because usually he's here for bad news. But he did want me to, um, to uh, read a statement that he prepared. Obviously, we're very proud that uh, the endowment was able to assist in this very important legislation. And uh, he wishes to extend his best wishes to all of you. He says, the many supporters... I think one of the reasons the, the, the stars were right in this uh, legislation is the fact that uh, the president of the National Artist Equity, uh, James Minden, is from Oregon. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we hope that that connection worked. Uh, I'm very pleased to uh, now introduce um, a colleague of mine, an artist, um, someone that I call a citizen artist. That's an artist who doesn't sit back and stay in the studio, but gets out of the studio and makes things happen in their profession, Rodney Krebs. Rodney um, has donated his services, and his services are his creativity. And his creativity is behind us in the artist proof uh, of a print. He's going to tell us a little bit about that. Um, I just want to recall a, a time Two years ago when we were working and lobbying the Senate and uh, Rockney and Sam Gilliam and I and Carol Skye, uh, all artists were walking around uh, the halls of the Hart Building um, uh, chatting with people trying to convince them uh, uh, the importance of this legislation. And it's important when an artist takes time away from uh, their studio uh, to pursue uh, those things that make a difference to all of us. Because when they're out of the studio and they're on the streets, uh, they're doing things that make a difference for every artist, not just themselves. And Rockney's one of those special people, Rockney Krebs. Thanks, George. Uh, I'm going to direct my comments to the lith lithograph that I made Miss Kit Barnhart over here. We have the first artist proof, 
and uh, it's going to be made available to um, our many valued supporters in this effort. I think, as we all know, uh, the cherry trees around Mr. Jefferson's memorial do not produce cherries. Uh, and that used to be a considerable concern to me for the Visual Artists' Rights Act of 1990 because those trees are strictly there for aesthetic purposes. They might be considered fruitless in some ways. Uh, there's only one rationale for their existence, and that is their beauty. And as such, they're probably the ancestor, among the ancestors of art, and uh, certainly its kin. And so there is a little rhyme on the print that says, um, even in the citadel of power, only the power of art can create fruit where fruit has never been and offer Mr. Jefferson a cherry from its gloriously blossoming kin. <laughs> something about the lithography process is that there are usually many people involved in the in the effort. One is the artist that does the creativity and the other is the artist that actually uh, does the execution of the print. Uh, Skip Barnhart, a master printmaker uh, who runs the printmakers uh, atelier for the Graphic Communications International Union is responsible for that. Skip, would you raise your hand so we can all thank you? Six hours. Uh, takes takes one hour to do uh, uh, six uh, uh, prints, and uh, that's why we don't see it done so much in the commercial arena anymore. But it certainly is done within the within the arts world. Uh, there's a a special person who uh, helped in this legislation. Um, Bob Castamar, Congressman from Wisconsin. Uh, Congressman Castamar spent 32 years in the U.S. House of Representatives, and over two decades he served as chairman of the subcommittee with jurisdiction over copyright. It was before that committee that I had the pleasure of, of speaking and, and presenting our case. It was his um, uh, leadership uh, and effort uh, that really gave us encouragement and an opportunity to continue to, to pursue this legislation. Um, we're very pleased that you're here with us today, Congressman Customer. If you'd come up and say a few words, we'd be much more. Thank you, George and John. I'm very personally deeply honored. Um, I must say that uh, you've already done the credits as you indeed should to staff and to the copyright office which always plays a very constructive role in all these questions. Um, uh, <clears throat> normally one, I guess, should be a little humble about these things, but I think, seriously, you got it right. Ed Markey, Senator Kennedy, and myself were, in fact, from a legislative standpoint, the reasons the act became law. Right. Ted Kennedy used to call me, at, you know, at, uh, as a as the thing developed in the last moment to try to save this this particular piece of legislation. And Ed Markey in the House was literally the the forerunner, the the person who drove this at the outset. And for those two people to be specially honored, I think is really important. Uh, let me only say that uh, this is also important to me because very often in copyright, intellectual property, we, in, in terms of this country, are required to take care of you know, the great corporations, people with interests, and, and we should. Rarely do we have the opportunity to respond to the needs 
the creative artist with intellect, inspiration, and hands. This act does that. And it is, for so, re so recently enacted, Berne Convention, which respected moral rights in this country, it is a down payment in terms of what this country owes, not only to the rest of the world, but to its own artists. And so I'm pleased and honored to be here tonight, and I thank you. The stars were also in line because our secretary treasurer is from Massachusetts, <laughs> and uh, she outdid herself uh, uh, in, in this effort. And we have two uh, standing representatives from that great state. Um, Congressman uh, Ed Markey, uh, your your effort on our behalf, in terms of your your leadership, your outreach, your willingness to to work with us uh, in our bringing the idea forward. Uh, your suggestions and changes uh, have meant a great deal to us. Um, I used the term earlier to describe uh, Rockne as a citizen artist, uh, but as a citizen artist myself, uh, that was very, very encouraging. We didn't have to sit and try to figure out what the people wanted to do or how they were going to help us, um, but you made it very clear and you were very straightforward and you did an excellent job for us. Thank you very much. But uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, three groups, especially, um, <clears throat> and uh, I would like to begin by uh, thanking uh, uh, Senator Kennedy and, uh, and uh, Bob Kastenmeyer, uh, because over in the House, I was just the guy who held the football, and Bob Kastenmeyer kicked it through the goalpost. I promise you, over in the Senate, uh, Ted Kennedy drop-kicked it with no assistance whatsoever. And, you do not want to know the number of compromises Senator Kennedy had to make in the final 24 hours to get this bill passed. You don't know, you do not want to know what happened in other areas of public policy. <laughs> now, uh, and Rockney over here, Rockney told me he was named after Newt Rockney, so I tried to find a football analogy. And clearly his father failed in the mission he was setting out the young man to accomplish. Uh, uh, secondly, um, and I'd also like to thank uh, uh, Ginny Sloan and Mike Remington and on my staff David Moulton and Jeff Price and Diana Lazarus because uh, they work long and hard on the House side to produce a product uh, which uh, Senator Kennedy would be able to work with over in the Senate where the obstacles were uh, much greater. Uh, secondly, I'd like to uh, uh, thank uh, all of the people, John Podesta and the alliance which he put together to uh, to make this effort the success which it has been. Uh, the bill which passed is a product of all of your good work. And uh, finally, I would like to uh, thank all of the artists. Uh, there is a, a, a new wind of uh, Philistinism which is blowing through uh, the country. Uh, but uh, do not be uh, dismayed by the uh, sound and the fury because the passage of this uh, legislation last year is uh, further evidence of the support which you have. <clears throat> me. And although there are those uh, throughout the 80s who uh, confused the uh, works of art with the uh, works of art with uh, toasters uh, and did not want to distinguish between the creative uh, and the useful, uh, I think that this piece of legislation helps to make that distinction uh, all the more clear. And uh, you should know that you have friends uh, here in Washington as you have them across the country and as long as there are uh, champions like uh, Bob Kastenmeyer and Ted Kennedy uh, you will be protected in the city. Congratulations. This all got started um, five, six years ago 
in a discussion with staff, uh, Senator Kennedy's office. And uh, what was unique about it is the fact that previous to this, the legislation uh, had always been looked at two pieces, moral rights and resale royalty. And when the bill was first introduced, both of these were combined together. Subsequently, they were brought apart as one of the compromises in the effort. But the creativity that went into bringing both of those together under the copyright legislation, copyright law, was, was really quite unique and very exciting. And we continue to seek interest uh, in the issue of resale royalty, uh, and that will be something that will be on the agenda uh, in the future. But with regards to moral rights uh, and the role that Senator Kennedy has played, uh, it has, been, uh, it has been outstanding. Um, this uh, particular uh, piece of legislation went down, as John told me, uh, to let more than the 11th hour. It was uh, uh, very, very, very close, and decisions were being made. Um, Senator Kennedy, your leadership in assisting us uh, in this effort uh, has been most well received. Uh, we are very pleased and very proud you have worked with not only yourself, uh, but with uh, uh, Congressman Markey and Congressman Kastenmeier. But your leadership in the Senate in bringing this uh, forward, and I think uh, Congressman uh, Markey's uh, dropkick is a good analogy, uh, you really did put it through the goalposts for us. Thank you, Senator King. behind all this legislation is I'm an artist too. Uh, not many people know about it. Uh, all my friends who are uh, politicians think I ought to be an artist, and those that are artists think I ought to remain a politician, but in any event. Uh, let me first of all say uh, what a real pleasure it is to be with all of you who have been the backbone of all of this uh, movement. Uh, it's been referenced uh, earlier, but uh, we all really owe you an enormous uh, debt of gratitude. And, there are going to be uh, hundreds of thousands of artists in communities all over this uh, nation. To, uh, we'll never know your uh, name, but uh, uh, when the, uh, the history is written about uh, this legislation, all of you are an integral part of all of it. And I want to say uh, what a pleasure it is to be with Bob Kastenmeier. Uh, he's a Mr. First Amendment. Uh, what uh, Bill Brennan was to the Supreme Court, uh, Bob Kastenmeier has been to the uh, Congress over all of these uh, years. And it's entirely fitting that he would take up uh, the rights of individual uh, artists because it's so consistent with his uh, determination on a wide range of different constitutional issues that he's been there in each and every step along uh, the way. He's had a very proud and distinguished uh, service in the House of Representatives and uh, all of us hope that he'll continue to be interested and involved in, in public policy because all the creative aspects of our, our life in this country and around the world will be enhanced with his activity. Bob, it's uh, great to be with you uh, here this evening and to have worked with you. Uh, Ed Markey, dear friend and colleague uh, from uh, Massachusetts and who is uh, a collector and interested in all aspects of uh, the creative uh, arts and he's been a dear and valued friend uh, to me so this was really a, uh, a real act of uh, joy and, and happiness. And, uh, let me just say, when we started out on this legislation, I never understood uh, what uh, the potential uh, implications on the First Amendment. Uh, are we denying First Amendment rights for individuals who want to go over and destroy someone else's art? And uh, should we have uh, some uh, constitutional hearings on that, where it goes on for weeks and weeks? I mean, enormously uh, interesting and uh, issues uh, of, of, uh, of importance, but in many instances, some things that many of us hadn't really uh, given the kind of depth of consideration uh, to. The whole question of resale royalties is something uh, that had always uh, seemed to me to be uh, important, and we had to, I think, as all of us understand, uh, drop those uh, particular provisions. On the contracting and waiver provisions, we had a more restrictive uh, outcome than I think some of us might have liked. Uh, when Ed Markey is uh, talking about uh, the adjustments in terms of public policy, I. I think this bill is worth the 65 Republican judges. I don't know what I'm asking you to do, but it seems to me that that's about a fair trade in terms of... Uh, actually, it's, uh, well, you know the, uh, the history of the final hours, but uh, if you do, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine, too. Uh, 
I want to uh, say that uh, and all the other kinds of problems that we are facing in terms of intellectual uh, property, uh, colorization, all of the directors and producers and actors and actors all came descending on us, thinking that we were really trying to be a, uh, a stalking horse and issues of colorization. Uh, the, uh, the publishing houses say, well, if this moves on through the colorization, what's it going to mean in terms of writers' rights, in terms of magazines? I mean, it was the most extraordinary effort, uh, quite frankly, from, I think, a limited financial uh, interest to try and confuse, misrepresent, and distort uh, what the purposes uh, were. And I think Bob uh, Kastenmeier enunciated them uh, so well. And that is, uh, I think all of us have seen, as a member of the Judiciary Committee and a member of that copyright uh, subcommittee, that when it comes to the economic interest versus the creative, time in and time out, uh, we fail to really provide those degrees of protection uh, which uh, I think permit all of us as uh, human beings to understand our souls and understand our heart uh, in a much uh, deeper and more profound ways and give uh, uh, a sense of meaning to all of our lives, which is really is such an important element in terms of our own kinds of society. I thank you all very much for uh, the, all the work that uh, you've done, and uh, we'll look forward to working together with you again in the very near future. Thank you very much. Thanks again. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you.